Hey everyone, welcome to another tutorial. Uh, I am today going to do a tutorial on big reactors. Now I'm continuing my sort of theme of reactor type uh, constructs today. And uh, you may see that I've sort of, this is going to be the second video I upload. So I am uh, on my way, I suppose. So, uh, big reactors. It is basically a mod that it's basically an add-on for um, thermal expansion it adds uh, a couple of things but it adds pretty much one one type of cons construct and that's the big reactor you can see one here that I built um, and big reactors are comprised of a couple components and they're basically they feed off of a substance called yellorium I'm gonna go to the big reactors tab here and this is yellowite ore, and it's going to be processed into yellorium. And this generates in large veins about the size of coal from level 64 down. And so here's a yellorium ingot. And you can make yellorium in a couple ways. You can make it in... You can make it by smelting it in the regular furnace. You can make it by pulverizing it into yellorium dust and then smelting the dust. You can make it an induction smelter. Or you can make it by putting uranium ore in an induction smelter. Or by, I think, pulverizing uranium ore. Let's see. Where's, where's dust? Yeah, here we go. Pulverizing uranium ore. Yep, and you get uranium dust. This will not work in a macerator. If you put uranium ore in a macerator, you get pulverized uranium ore, I think. Or it's gonna no, crush uranium ore. So that won't work in a macerator, but it will. It will work in a pulverizer. So basically, uranium ore can be used as a substitute to yellowite if either a you didn't you install this later on when you. Uh, they have already generated a world, and you didn't get any yellorium in world gen. Um, and you're too lazy to turn retrogen on for some reason, because you can turn retrogen on. Or if you're afraid, retrogen will break your world. Um, or, for some reason, yellorium generation isn't working for you. If there's like an ID conflict or something like that, then you can use uranium as a substitute. Or if you have a lot of uranium ore, and you, you want to use it for something. So, um, yeah... Big Reactors is available and they're at their site, just like many other mods, it's also available on Minecraft Forum. And what it does is it adds these things besides Yellowite Ore. It adds Reactor Casing, Reactor Glass, Reactor Controller, Reactor Power Tap, Reactor Access Port, Reactor Fuel Rod, Reactor Control Rod, or I'm sorry, Yellowium Fuel Rod. Reactor computer port, reactor redstone port, and cyanite reprocessor. And then it also adds some items. It adds eulorium ingots, cyanite ingots, graphite bars, which you're going to need. That's just made by smelting charcoal. Um, plutonium, which is made by two cyanite in a cyanite reprocessor. And it also adds fluid eulorium and fluid cyanite, which are technically the forms that are stored inside these fuel rods. I don't know if you can see the little streaks going along them like water. But there's no way to extract those and no way to input those into the reactor. This is what they look like in liquid form. This is Eulorium, this is Cyanite. They can't, they are miscraft pages for these. Uh, they'll probably be implemented in future so you can like crystallize them into ingots or something. So as of right now, there are miscraft pages for them, but they're kind of pointless because you can't do anything with them. And they flow extremely fast as you can see. And they pretty much act just like regular water. They don't have any special side effects or anything like that. Um, right, so that's about it. Let's get started. So this is this is a basic big reactor, okay? You can see the frame is made of reactor casing. And the sides are made of reactor glass. And the top is... Well, the floor is made of reactor casing too. And the top is made of reactor glass with reactor control rods in this sort of ring. And the reason for that is these ye little yellow and black columns are yellow yellorium fuel rods, and they are full of yellorium. 
which I put in through here. Reactor access port. You need at least one of these. Because you can put Eulorium in and you get um, cyanite out. And I'll show you what to do with cyanite in a minute. You also need one of these, reactor power tap. This is where you get your power out. Your reactor is useless without this because otherwise you'll have no method to output power. You'll need a, always need one of these, reactor controller. This is where you control your reactor. This is where you see your fuel, your heat, your energy buffer. Or you can change settings. You can activate and deactivate it from here. You can have as many of these fuel rods as you can fit in here. But they have to go all the way from the floor to the ceiling, and they have to be topped with a reactor control rod. That's the only restriction. This is basically a modular reactor. You can set it up however you want, but it has to be in a... Uh, I forget the technical term. What's the technical term for a six-sided shape that is straight-sided? I don't know. Um, but it has to be in basically either a cube or a rectangle. It can't be in like these funky shapes that have like extensions off of them or stuff like that. But I think it can be in any shape that is a cube or a rectangle. So... I'm not sure what the maximum size for it is, but the minimum size is basically 3x3x3 three by three by three external and with one fuel rod in the center. That's pretty much the smallest you can get, and that one will produce a couple of uh, RF a tick. A reactor this size, which is 7x7x7 seven by seven by seven internal and 9x9x9 nine 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 external, that means from the outside of this to the outside of this, it's 9x9x9, nine by nine by nine. and the, from the inside of that wall to the inside of that wall is 7x7. Seven seven. Um... This will produce, at maximum efficiency, 16,000 RF a tick. That's a lot of power. That's more power than you're ever going to use, ever, unless you have, like, 15 quarries running at once. And it will, it'll power those with no problem. Because 10 RF converts into 1 MJ from Billcraft. And if that's, that's 1,600 MJ. And a quarry will run out of 50. Yeah. Yeah, that's a lot. So, basically, um, what we're doing here is, you see this energy buffer? This can store 10 million RF. Reactor heat bar, this can go up to, I think, 5,000 degrees Celsius. That's delta T, so above room temperature. Um, this is your fuel rods. It says 100% full and 100% enriched. That's a percentage across all the fuel rods. Um... And once it burns through eulorium fuel, it's stored in millibuckets. One eulorium ingot equals 1,000 millibuckets of eulorium fuel. And I think one, one fuel rod segment can store something like 4,000 millibuckets or something like that. I, I don't know the exact numbers. Uh, let's see, how tall are these? 27994. So that's 8,000 if it hadn't consumed... Or 28,000 if they hadn't consumed any... And this thing is seven blocks tall. So yeah, that's that's 4,000 millibuckets per segment. Um, it has 16 fuel rods, and it has a heat of zero degrees Celsius. Now, I've noticed, I don't know whether this is a bug or a feature, but even when it's like not operational, if you fired it up at least once, it'll always produce 0 0.2 RF per tick. I don't know why. Maybe that's like res meant to be residual reactivity from the fuel rods. But you see how it's not consuming any fuel? It's kind of odd. Anyway, if you hit activate, you'll see the fuel usage go up a lot. You'll see the heat start going up. You see it going up to about 16,000 RF a tick. 15,000, 16,000. As soon as it hits 989 nine, Celsius, I think it is, it, the power output will drop. And I don't know why. So it's already filled up the energy bar, pretty much. Um... Yeah, the power up will drop up dramatically once you get above 998 degrees Celsius. That's what that's what it is. Um, so you want to keep your reactor below that if you can. So you also notice that while it's powering down, you see we're at 1100 degrees Celsius. It's also producing 110 RF tick. So it produces however much when it's not active. It produces one tenth the RF number as it does the power number. Um. That's about it. That's all the mechanics. When it depletes fuel, then it outputs cyanite in the form of a cyanite ingot for every 1,000 millibuckets of eulorium it depletes. Cyanite can be put into a cyanite reprocessor. This. And the way you craft stuff... I should have gotten this earlier, by the way. Reactor casings... 
crafted with four graphite bars, a lorium ingot, and four iron ingots. You'll need a lot of these. Each one of these is a reactor casing. Each one of these little blocks. So you're going to need a lot of lorium and iron and uh, charcoal. So, yeah, you will need a significant investment before you start building this. But it'll provide you as much power as you could possibly want. Reactor glass, just two gl of any type of glass that's considered glass in the four door dictionary, and one reactor casing produces two reactor glass. This produces four reactor casing with this recipe. Reactor controller is a diamond and four reactor casing, two eulorium ingots, and a redstone. You only need one of those. Reactor power tap, you can have as many of these as you want four reactor casing and four redstone. Um, these will output, I think, infinite power, and by infinite, I mean they will output as much power as the reactor is currently outputting. Your best bet for power transfer is just sticking a resonant energy cell right next to it, because resonant energy cells can upset like 50 million RF a tick or something like that, something insane. Um, they're the highest power transfer unit in uh, thermal expansion. You, but if you put multiple of these, it's like, say if you put four, and you're outputting 16,000 RF a tick, just one will output 16,000, but if you have four that are, that are connected to valid things, they'll output... 4,000 each, so it'll divide the output equally among all the power taps. These access ports will not automatically import and automatically export. They have to be have items pumped in and out of them, but they are automatable with ME, import and export buses, build craft transport pipes, item ducts, hoppers, anything you want, pretty much. Um, let's see, what else do I have? Uh, control rods. Let's see, first of all, power taps, we already see all the crafted access ports are crafted with a piston, a chest, and four reactor casing. You'll notice there are like two types of access ports over here, the blue one and the uh, yellow one. These are both crafted the same way, I just have this one switched to direction out. If I had it switched to direction in, they'd look the same, but if this is switched to direction out, it'll spit out waste instead of taking in eulorium. Um... That just, that just determines the way it's automated. You can have just one of these and put in Eulorium here, take waste out here. doesn't matter. But if you're spitting out waste, the out one will take priority over the in one. But if you don't have an out one, it'll spit out waste here. Reactor control rod, four reactor casing. Practically everything requires four reactor casing. It's just sort of a default. I won't, I'll won't. i stop calling that out. Four, three graphite bars, one redstone, and one Eulorium. You'll require one of those for every fuel rod that you have. Fuel rod column, not fuel rod block, fuel rod column. You see these are at the top of all the fuel rods. So if you have you want 16 fuel rod columns, you need 16 reactor control rods. Yellowium fuel rod. Six iron ingots, two graphic bar bars, and one yellowium ingot. This one does not require reactor casings, of course. Um, you'll need as many of these as you have height in your reactor, and as many of these as you want columns. Basically, you just stack these up until you hit the top of the reactor, and then stick a control rod on the top, fill them with your lorium, you're done. Uh, one thing to know about the reactor control rods is you will just, you'll see individual heat on the control rods. You'll see fuel in millibuckets. You'll see waste in millibuckets. And you'll see, you can set a name for whatever reason you want to, I don't know why. Uh, you can set the control rod insertion. At one hour, and for... I expect all you to understand what, pretty much what a control rod does. At 100% insertion, it'll stop reaction entirely, so it'll basically act as the reactor shut off. That's 100% insertion on all the control rods. Each control rod has its own insertion, so if I set this to 10%, this one won't change. So make sure to set all of them to a, like your the desired percentage. Or if you want, you can set them to different percentages and see how that works. Another thing to note about reactor fuel rods is they will periodically admit. Uh, neutron pulses. Fast neutrons and slow neutrons. Fast neutrons just pass through everything and go out. They don't do anything. As of yet, anyway. They might cause, like, radiation poisoning or something in the future. Slow neutrons will, they will emit from a random direction. If a slow neutron hits an adjacent fuel rod, or a, just a fuel rod in general, um, it will energize that fuel rod. It'll, like, um, I guess, boost that fuel rod's power output by 2x and heat output by 2x for a short amount of time, and then the, it'll go back down to normal. So if you have your fuel rods grouped together, they will produce a lot more power and a lot more heat than they would if they were just sitting at the opposite ends of the uh, device. So that's just something to keep in mind. Um, 
you can have a substance called a moderator in here, and you can use practically any liquid, any uh, molten liquid from um, thermal expansion. So you can use destabilized redstone, energized glowstone, resonant ender, blazing pyrothium, or gelid cryothium. And you can also use iron blocks, gold blocks, or diamond blocks. Gelid cryothium is the best at cooling, but it's not a good moderator. Um, blazing pyrothium is a really good moderator, but it's horrible at cooling because it's blazing. Um, gold blocks uh, and diamond blocks are pretty good moderators, but not good at cooling because they're solids. Um, Resonant Ender is pretty darn good at cooling and moderating, but not as good. It's not as good as moderating as Blazing Pyrothium, not as good as cooling as Jello Pyrothium. I find it a pretty good compromise. If you have a good source of Resonant Ender, like a Miscraft Age with Resonant Ender pools or something, then uh, that would be your best bet, is to fill all the spaces in here with Resonant Ender. With this design, with the Ring of Fuel Rods, which is my favorite design, uh, because the Neutron Pulses will almost always hit an adjacent Fuel Rod, my the the best thing I've discovered is to only put um, moderator around the outside because that'll stop any fast neutrons coming out or reflect them back in. Because you don't want to stop slow neutrons in here because that'll stop them from hitting adjacent fuel rods. So you don't want any moderator in here. Maybe you want to put water in here because water is a pretty good coolant, or maybe jelly cryothium, because jelly cryothium is a really good coolant, but it's not a very good moderator. So you want a really good coolant in here, but not a very good moderator, and you want a really good moderator and coolant out here. So, and remember, moderation is how good it stops neutrons, and cooling is how much heat it dissipates and or absorbs. Got it? Okay. Back onto the peripherals. So, we have, in addition to the peripherals I just did, which was the uh, reactor redstone, or reactor controller, power tap, access port, control rod, and fuel rod. We also have the reactor redstone port, four redstone, a gold ingot, plus reactor casings. Reactor computer port, two gold ingots, a reactor redstone port, two redstone, and some reactor casings. This one can be uh, called or wrapped as a peripheral from uh, computer craft. So if you want to computer control this, like with a modem or something, then you can computer control your reactor. It's pretty awesome. Hold on a second. I don't want that rain. There we go. Uh, let's see, I'm missing one thing. Um, oh, right, reactor red net port. Red net port... Four red net cable from Mine Factory Reloaded, which is crafted like so. One gold ingot and some reactor casings. Red net ports act kind of like redstone ports, but they react to logic arguments from red net controllers from Mine Factory Reloaded. So I believe they can be controlled with redstone because a redstone signal can be transmitted along a red net cable, but they also respond to logic arguments from the red net controller itself. So it's a pretty nifty device. It's like it's like a more basic version of the computer craft controller basically if you don't want to learn lua that's the thing for you it just relies on logic arguments um last thing cyanide reprocessor two pistons an iron ingot a yellowium fuel rod a redstone and four reactor casing this is not part of the multi-block this is uh, a separate machine you place it down has its own gui it's got a water tank this can only hold water uh 5,000 millibuckets so five buckets energy buffer can, uh, can hold 10,000 rf um, a thing here that allows you to set what sides do what, and you can see everything is, this is a, this is the blue side, this is the red, this is the green, um, this is in, this is out. This, this thing will take 1,000 millibuckets of water, a couple thousand RF, and I'm guessing 2,000 RF, because the, the center will have 5,000 millibuckets of water, so enough for five operations. It'll take 1,000 millibuckets of water, 2,000 RF, I don't rely on that number, and two cyanite ingots and produce one plutonium, which is just like it's basically reprocessed eulorium, and you can feed that back in and get another 1,000 millibuckets, millibuckets of eulorium. So it adds something to do with all your cyanite. And uh, for just a little bit of power and water, you can just have a little bit more power of your reactor. So you can basically just like put an aqueous accumulator underneath there, and then you can set the way I usually set it is red, green, blue. So that you have input here, output here, water down here, 
and then you can put your aqueous accumulator underneath it here with like a pipe and then you can have like a item duct coming in here from this guy over here and then you can have another item duct coming in here to this guy and then just be auto feeding stuff through the system and have like a conduit or an energy conduit coming all the way over like here come have a conduit coming there and then feeding it so that would be a pretty efficient setup or you can have i usually actually have this a little bit closer i usually have it like right here or something like that and then have the item ducks feeding in the power and then have the aqueous accumulator underneath it so it's a pretty cool design um you can have these reactors any size and shape you want as long as it's uh, six-sided and has well, obviously it's got to be six-sided as long as it's in Minecraft uh, as long as it's a something God, why can't I remember that right now um, anyway so that was big reactors it's a good source of power it's a significant investment initially but all you need to invest into it uh, after you got it set up is Eulorium and you can set up a quarry and a mining age for that uh, and uh, yeah, so have fun with your reactors. One thing to note, if this temperature gauge hits maximum, it does not blow up, it does not overheat, it does not melt down, it does not stop producing power, it just reduces its efficiency. That's it for now. It doesn't have any serious consequences. Now, this is only for the current version. They may add new stuff to it, maybe new moderators, or they may add it blowing up if it hits maximum heat, but... Um, as of for now, you can let it hit maximum heat and not do anything. My setup is I have a 5x5x5 five by five by five internal in my house. I have the outer ring filled with resonant ender and the inner ring filled with resonant ender. I didn't consider the whole moderator thing when I filled the inner ring, but whatever. I have um, however many few rods it would be if this was only one block in the center. Eight, I think. Eight or ten few rods. Um... Basically, just make a ring in the center of the 5x5x5 five by five by five with a one block in the center. And then fill that all with Eulorium, put the fuel rods, with, or the control rods at the top, set all the control rods to 90% insertion, and then set up an import and export uh, access ports to a cyanide reprocessor with some water from an aqueous accumulator and some power from the reactor. Set up a couple of resonant energy cells off of the reactor power tap and you're good to go then wire that into your main power system this will hold at about 970 degrees heat um to avoid overfilling the resonant energy cells and starting wasting power because if it fills up internal buffer it'll just start wasting the power it's producing um you want to set up a couple of redstone ports you want to set up one redstone port here and one here uh and then you want to set up like some redstone underneath it so let's see, I have some redstone over here, and then, like so, or you can set up, like, red net cables or something like that. Then you want to set one um, redstone port, doesn't matter which, to output energy amount, active well above 99%, commit. Okay, and then you see it lit up. And then you want this one to input toggle reactor on-off, commit. And once you shut down the reactor... That means that any time the um, energy in the internal buffer goes above 99%, then it'll auto shut off the reactor, or it'll change its state. In other words, it'll only gain power when it's on, so once it goes above 99%, then it'll shut itself off. Um, and then another thing you could do is set a couple more redstone ports so that... When the output is temperature while above 990 degrees Celsius, which is just below the cutoff point, then input toggle reactor on off. That's another thing to consider. Or to be a little bit safer, instead of toggling the reactor on or off that way, then I guess you could uh, do change control rod insertion while on 90%, while off 100%. That way it'll just change the control rods to fully inserted so it won't react. That way even if the reactor's off when that call is is done, then it won't conflict with this setting. So it's just a little bit simpler that way. Um, that's just the two I'd recommend because you don't want the efficiency reduced. And then... Well, if since this one switches the reactor off when the power buffer's full, 
how are you going to know when the power buffer is empty? Well, you could put another set of redstone ports here, and I think I just...